So let's take a look at the task recorder. And we're gonna do a really simple one as part of this because this is, like I said, probably the single coolest feature that we have within Dynamics 365. I'm gonna go ahead and click on my particular settings here and I'm gonna click on my task recorder. And inside of my task recorder, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a recording. So we're gonna do this from the ground up as we go through the processing. And the recording name, I'm gonna call it uh, create a new, uh, we'll say item. So we are going to create a new item. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the start action here. And basically you're gonna see the screen change just a little bit here. We're going to see that we have a recording that says create a new item that we've gone through and labeled. We have our steps that are on our far right here. And then we have a stop button that we can do at the end of this process. And basically what we're doing is we're gonna go through the process of actually creating an item. So I'm gonna go into my release product maintenance workspace I'm gonna go ahead and click on my new action and I'm gonna create a new release product inside of this environment. I'm going to, after that new quick tab comes out for the fast action details that I can enter, I'm gonna enter in a product number. I'm going to call the product my new product as we go through this. And you can see as I'm entering in this data that on the far right here, the task recorder is actually going through and updating to reflect all of the choices that I'm making as part of this process. So if I say it's an audio product, it's storage wise, we're gonna warehouse enable this. We're gonna make sure that it doesn't have any serial number or batch number. We're gonna use the default reservation hierarchy. These are all settings obviously that then make it easier for you to set up that particular item. And the cool thing about this is you can personalize it as well. So therefore you can add additional fields or remove fields that you generally need for the creation of your products. The net result of this is I'm gonna to go to my inventory price and just put a price in here as an example without setting up the other prices. We can see then it's gone through and then selected all this information to drive that. And I'm gonna click on okay to create that particular item. And now we should have an item that's generated and all of those steps that we did as part of that process are now reflected inside of our task recording. Now that I'm back at my actual dashboard, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this particular process. I'm gonna save this to my computer Computer, so therefore I now have an actual create new item file. And what I could also do is I could actually save this to lifecycle services. And so that's where then you can have a repository of all these different task recordings that you can then use uh, as part of uh, your deployment method. You can also export it as a Word document. Uh, it doesn't have screenshots obviously inside of this, um, but you can go ahead and grab screenshots and then add them obviously to that Word document as you go through the processing. And you've probably all heard this in the past. Anytime you've had an issue in any ERP system, the first thing a developer will ask you are what are the steps that you use to recreate this particular issue? So from an end user perspective, you can even take a task recording and then save that as a developer recording that you can send to either your internal development team or even potentially our development team to be able to address then any of those issues. I'm gonna go ahead and return to the main menu here. And one, I'm gonna take this one step further because this is where I think the, the entire methodology and how you do your actual business processes for tracking um, how you do that business process changes. Now what we have as a feature is that we can actually go through and play this recording as a guide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open for my PC. And you can see that I even have open from recents as well. So any of the recent ones that I've made that I saved, but if I go to open for my PC and select this and we go into our downloads here, we should see create a new item that's in there. So there's our create new item that I've gone through and loaded because it did save that file into my downloads area. I'm gonna go ahead and open this task guide and then great on the right here, I have a step-by-step -step process that shows me how to go through and set this up. I can go ahead and click on the release product maintenance and then click new and I can basically drive it through here because it's actually on the screen here. Well, it doesn't stop there and that's the big differentiating factor here. And this is a feature in my opinion, every software application that's more complex in nature uh, should have as part of a base offering. And that's the task guide guiding you what to do. So what I did there is I clicked on the start with this and I'm not doing anything else in the background to fake this. Basically, it's going through and saying, click on my release product maintenance, and it's showing me where to go as part of this process. So I'm gonna click on my release product maintenance. 
you're going to see it swing over to our top here. And so I'm moving my mouse over to create a new action. I'm gonna create a new release product with this. I'm going to go ahead and type in a number that's related to this and tab off of it. And what you can also do is you can edit these so that there's content inside of here that also helps you make decisions in terms of an end user that's interacting with the system on what value should be selected or any type of information you wanna to convey to them. Examples of that are when you actually go to your item model group, for example, are you using a FIFO model group? Are you using a standard or an average? Or what are the rules that really drive how that is separated or differentiated? And basically you can go through the, each of these steps and it will guide you exactly where you need to go to be able to do this process. So every single one that I'm clicking on inside of here, it's going through and then focusing and pointing at what field I should be actually filling out to be able to go through this particular process. And the finality of this, as you can see, as I'm going through and just showing all these different values, is that I'll even move the screen for you to be able to put into focus any of the values that are not in the screen initially as you go through your processing. As you can see, it exposed the OK button, which was not there before as I was doing the process. Now, other aspects of this too, so in terms of practical uses, obviously training documentation, this is fantastic for, but also for business process documentation that's a periodic type process, such as a month end close or even a year end close, where maybe there are some processes that you typically do not run. Well, you can set up a task recording to be able to then have that information to be able to leverage it inside it in the future.